Now we're here on December 13th, 2018, and we're continuing with Steve Delia's interviews with poets. Today's poet is... Uh, oh, it's me! Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing it. Um, uh, for the benefit of our audience, where did you start with poetry? Well, you were there. Um, actually, if you go... It's very hard to say where you start with poetry. I mean, I remember writing a, something about a frog and a log and telling it to my mother, and she said, oh, you're a poet. And that was the first time I was pronounced a poet, but I don't think I was really a poet until many years later. I, and I think many other children had written that same poem. Um, but uh, my first experience with public poetry was at the uh, Northeast Regional Library, where uh, you and Bob Forster were running the uh, program, and uh, every two weeks, poets met, and it was just this wonderful venue where you had an actual stage and a lectern and a built-in audience because the poets came back uh, week after week, and um, that was my first experience with, uh, with public poetry. And I, I distinctly remember the day you, you came in, and after you read... Bob and I looked at each other and said, where did this guy come from? Wow. <laughs> Is you, you made an immediate impression. Yeah, well, see, I, I had no idea because, uh, you know, I didn't really know what that was like, what the whole idea was. I thought, I thought of a poem as something that's on the page and, you know, you, you, maybe you read your work in front of other people who are poets and you see if they think that you're a poet too. I, I had, you know, I didn't know uh, really what it could be and what the potentials were, and um, you guys really helped me to see that. So I really appreciate that. Uh, unlike some of the interviews that we've done, we're hearing a lot of poets say, you know, I started writing when I was ten or eight or whatever. But you didn't. You you started writing later in, in life, correct? Well, yes, I dabbled when I was I dabbled when I was in school. I dabbled here and there, and I had a few poems written that I thought I liked, but I didn't really get into it until I started to read at the Northeast Regional. I was already forty years old at that at that point, and even though you you're younger than I am, you were already on the scene and you were an established poet, and uh, you were among the people who certainly helped me to see what uh, could be done with poetry. What was the first group you ever critiqued with? Uh, Christine Groves. Christine Groves group? Yes. And do you think critiquing has affected your, your work? Oh, very much, yeah. I mean, even just casually listening to other people affects your work. But when you go to a critique and you actually run a poem by other people who are, who are listening critically, you, you get a, a very strong feel for what they're getting, what they're not getting, what they're getting in a different way than you thought you were putting it across. Um, and you also you get suggestions, and some of the suggestions you may take and some of them you may not, but there is, there is something in every, uh, everything that somebody says about your poem to pay attention to because this is the way your words are, are striking in other person's ears. This is the way that they're taking your, your work in. And that's really what you write for. You don't really, you write for yourself to start with, but the reason you're writing it down is to put it across to somebody else, and you really want to see how it's coming across. Are you surprised by uh, what people feel or see in your poetry? And I, I mean that either way, good or bad. But are you generally surprised, or do you think, do you think people kind of okay? They're getting what what I'm putting down. Very often I'm surprised. Very often I'm surprised at uh, at them liking something that I I wasn't sold on myself. And sometimes that will convince me that oh, that's a lot better than I. <laughs> it's a good feeling. Right, it is a good feeling. But it, I think it's more important to get what's, what's not working because it's very easy to convince yourself when you write something that that works, that's, that's good stuff. 
And if you see that somebody's reaction is lukewarm, as much as that's a little painful, it's very helpful because it, it lets you know what to work on and what, uh, you know, what needs a little help. Do you think as poets of our own work, do you think we can be objective by what we're putting down? No. No, I don't believe in objective. I, well, I think that's what poetry is. I think poetry is essentially a subjective thing. It's not, I mean, if you try to be objective, it's, you're not going to be doing poetry. So objectivity is for science and poetry is, is something else. It's a form of art and, and you can't be objective with it. Um, but the point is that your subjectivity should be able to cross the line over to someone's el someone else's subjective viewpoint. If it doesn't, then that's when it doesn't work. It's not that it's not that the poetry is objective. It's that it, it, it's that it has a certain commonality, that a universality that other people will understand. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we read a poem, or you read a poem? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't have anything in particular in mind, but maybe an older piece so we can sort of really see. Want to compare with. Yeah. See, see if we've had any improvement over the years. <laughs> well, okay. I I just happen to have a 1993 poetry forum anthology, which was from. The uh, Northeast Regional, they would put it, uh, Bob Forster would put it together every year, wouldn't he? Or, or yes, yeah. Thereabouts. And I was, I think, I guess this was the first one that I was in. And, wow, oh my, I don't know if I want to go public with these. <laughs> well, I well, we won't I force you if you, if you yeah, don't want to read, read it. We can do something well, else. No, but. it's fair enough. I mean, this is, uh, okay. This is called Man's Mark. I have no idea how this is going to come out. About the host's abode I stir, disturbing his sleepy air, corrupting its pristine ambiance with my odor. And I dare to lay my bacteria-laden hands on things and even move them about, rearranging them into some pattern, I'm certain, although I can't see the whole of it. So I leave my mark, ignorantly as a whelp who knows not within himself why he needs to urinate while his bladder is not yet full. <laughs> I need to dirty this place, to move, to touch, to breathe, to be. I need to leave behind a sullied world to testify that I have been. That is you. Yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't think I was writing like that back then, but I guess I, I guess I was. <laughs> well, then that's interesting. You, you know, I, I know for myself, um, I tend not to want to read a lot of my older work. I'm interested in what I'm doing now or what I've done very recently. You seem to be in that place too. Do, do you yeah. think that's generally true for most I think so problems. I think I think we have a lot of enthusiasm for our work when, it, when, it, when we've just done it and that's like that's like one of those moments that it's really it really seems special but then it's also nice to be able to go back to something that you've forgotten and think you know well it's not bad either <laughs>